With this summer's deluge of game trailers and announcements, it's pretty clear what type of games we're going to be playing for the next couple of years. From the rise of claustrophobic survival horror to the return of cinematic 2D adventures, we're going to break down all the different trends and types of games that will define the sorts of games we're playing through 2023 and beyond. Like space? Like horror? Well, you're going to be set for the next two years then. The Callisto Protocol from Striking Distance, headed up by Dead Space co-designer Glenn Schofield, has an alien invasion hitting a remote prison colony on Jupiter's moon Callisto, where jump scares and messy evisceration are clearly part of the daily routine. Meanwhile, on the far side of Mars, another game, Fort Solis, is a sci-fi thriller starring actor Troy Baker from The Last of Us and Roger Clark from Red Dead Redemption 2. We're also getting Aliens Dark Descent, a squad-based shooter set on a distant moon absolutely riddled with xenomorphs. And Routine is another game that's truly creepy and unnerving Terrorfest from Lunar Software set on an abandoned moon base. Horror tends to reflect the things that society is most afraid of in particular at that moment. Hence, irradiated monsters were literally big in the 50s thanks to the threat of nuclear war, while mass riots and civil unrest in the 60s and 70s contributed to the rise of zombie cinema. It's no surprise then that after being trapped in our homes for two years, hiding from a deadly virus, claustrophobic space horror is back in a big way. We've seen over the last two years a huge trend for weird simulation games, with stuff like PC building sim and gas station sim attracting healthy fan bases. I think we're going to see this trend edge out into the mainstream in the coming years as developers apply the recipe to establish genres and scenarios. Navalis, for example, is bringing the sim into the cyberpunk realm, with players building business empires out of noodle bars and nightclubs. While Potioncraft is coming out of early access soon with its combination of RPG narrative and spell manufacturing. We also saw the beer making sim Brewmaster and the airport ground crew sim Airport Sim at the Future Game Show, which shows the wider interests and experiences of players, i.e. drinking and being stranded in airports, are influencing the market. Expect more video game genres to be mined for simulation potential through 2022 and 2023. My grandfather, Elijah Walton, had a dream to build the city of tomorrow. I think games that break the fourth wall or play with the whole reality fiction divide in a new self-reflective way will become more common as young developers question and subvert the accepted rules. American Arcadia from Spanish developer Out of the Blue is set in a retro-futuristic metropolis where every citizen is being filmed as part of living soap opera and the player has to escape. Of course, it's based on 1998's The Truman Show, but as a comment on the act of playing games and immersion, it's pretty interesting too. I also really like the look of Black Firewall, an adventure set inside a smartphone where you're trying to save the old OS from a firmware update. Finally, The Alters is a sci-fi drama in which a lone worker on a desolate planet creates multiple versions of himself to survive. A comment on the age-old convention of multiple lives in video games? Whatever the case, it's fun to see games doing weird things with familiar concepts to freak us out a bit. We seem to be seeing a mini renaissance for the strategy game with both real-time and turn-based flavors getting re-examined and refreshed, often using ideas from other games. Designed by a team of ex-Starcraft devs at Frost Giant, Stormgate is a humans versus aliens RTS with a co-op mode inspired by the MOBA game. They're calling it Social RTS and it's indicative of the sort of genre fusion we're also seeing in Sims. Marvel's Midnight Suns from strategy specialist Firaxis mixes the tactical turn-based combat of XCOM with role-playing elements. And I love the look of Demon School, another tactical role-player set in a demon-infested school, which brings in a simplified, highly stylized combat mechanic, where players select character movements and then watch as the action plays out, rewinding if necessary. The PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo DS era saw lots of experimentation with strategy mechanics and weird stories and visuals, and I think we're going to get another wave of that over the coming year. This is another genre that seems to get rediscovered every generation. The cinematic 2D adventure, which arguably began with the original Prince of Persia in 1989, was well represented in the summer showcases. Sci-fi platformer Flashback 2 is set to arrive this summer, 30 years after its classic predecessor, with the shape-shifting alien morphs returning once more. 
The last case of Benedict Fox is a Lovecraftian metroidvania with the player searching the memories of deceased victims to find a demonic killer. There was also Planet of Lana, a beautifully hand-painted interplanetary rescue story with its natural environments and gentle colours. It has a kind of Studio Ghibli feel. Lastly, from the Future of Play livestream, check out Psychroma in which you play as a digital medium investigating a cybernetic house. I think we're going to see a lot more games using the power of next-gen consoles and high-end PC to produce intricate, highly illustrative 2D worlds. This I think we're going to see more games moving away from conventional action-adventure stories filled with cinematic sequences, audio logs, and highly scripted linear plotlines. As Dusk Falls got the attention at the Xbox event with its curious tale of two families becoming linked by a dramatic event. Multiple players can take part shaping the story through text prompts and QTEs, while the game analyzes each participant's personalities. Immortality, the latest FMV game from Sam Barlow, is an investigative horror thriller about a missing actress where you must cut and edit film scenes to solve the mystery. There are heavy David Lynch vibes and I love the meta feel of it. We also saw the Entropy Center, which uses an interesting time rewind function, and Norland, a medieval kingdom builder that generates stories based on your noble family. I can absolutely guarantee that emergent narratives are going to be huge in the mid 2020s. Christian says that you've got some special thing planned. Yeah, it's like a crazy nine day festival. It only happens every 90 years. From Midsummer and Men to cult magazines like Weird Walks and Rituals and Declarations to Cottagecore Fashion, we're rediscovering the appeal of rural superstition, mythology and symbolism. This is clearly coming into games too. A highlight of the Xbox show was Pentiment, an RPG from Obsidian with visuals like an illustrated manuscript set in a 16th century German abbey. At the Future Game Show, there was also Bramble the Mountain King, a dark adventure based on Nordic fables, while the Future of Play show had a new gameplay trailer for Persona Theory's Promising Cabaret, which explores the folklore of Southeast Asia. My favourite though was Team Ninja's Wulong Fallen Dynasty, based on the 14th century novel Romance of the Three Kingdom. It's good to see so many titles exploring beyond generic Tolkien-esque fantasy into the vast library of global belief systems. I found you. <laughs> As the climate emergency becomes more pressing and persuasive, it's only natural that themes of ecological catastrophe will become more common in games, and we saw several examples during the summer shows. High Water is a turn-based strategy game set on a flooded Earth, Frozen Flame is a survivalist adventure set on a dying planet, and Season, a letter to the future, is a photography quest in which you travel a decaying world photographing its wonders. There are also lots of titles dealing with what happens after global oblivion, interplanetary colonization. Lightyear Frontier, Outpost and The Invincible all took different approaches to the challenges of populating new worlds. Spoiler alert, turns out it's not going to be that easy. So what do you think are going to be the biggest gaming trends over the next couple of years? Let us know in the comments below.